All right, kids, here's uh, section 8.9, the disk method. Um, revolving volumes, and we're finding volumes by revolving around the x or the y axis. This reminds me of those party favors that you have. You might see them like a wedding bell, or in the classroom, I have a pumpkin <laughs> that actually you take the pumpkin and you take the party favor and you open it up like full circle, and it's like an accordion type thing, and it comes out looking like uh, a 3D object. So remind me when I see you in class to show you the pumpkin. But it's taking, the pumpkin actually takes what looks like a parabola. And when you open it up, like 2D, you put it in, in like a regular parabola type thing. But when you start spiraling it around, it opens up and creates a 3D version of a pumpkin. So same thing, I think I've seen like with wedding bells, when you open those up, like they're flat. And then you revolve them around 100 or 360 degrees, and they end up turning into this three-dimensional type thing. So if you can remember that from party favors and such, that's what we're looking at today, uh, finding the volume of a solid of revolution. So they want us to sketch the area bounded by x squared, y equals 0, and x equals 2. Well, x squared is your happy parabola, and we're going to make this kind of exact since they gave us some points here. We know it starts at 0, 0. We know it goes 1, 1, and then 2, 4. All right, so here is my perfect sketch, right, of y equals x squared. Then it's bounded by y equals 0. Well, y equals 0 is the x-axis. This is y equals 0. This is uh, y equals x squared. And then they say x equals 2. Well, x equals 2 would be a vertical line that goes through 2, right? So what's the region? that we're talking about that's bounded by the three of those things. And that would be this section right in here. All right, so sketch it, we did. Um, revolve it around the x-axis to create a solid. So in other words, you're taking this thing and you're revolving it across the x-axis. It's going to create a mirror image like this. Now I'm not going to color it. I'm going to actually just slice it in like that. So that you know that what we've done is we revolved it. Now again, I would highly recommend that you watch the first few minutes of the curriculum video because he again has an applet that shows you this better, like visually what it looks like. So fast forward through whatever you want to fast forward there but I would highly recommend that you see that visual so you know what I'm talking about. What it actually does is it creates a circular disk when I revolve it around. It's like a circle. So what does the area of the cross section look, section look like? It looks like a circle. What's the area of a circle? We know the area of a circle is pi r squared. What's the radius of the circle? Well, in our case, the radius would be just this much right? That would be the radius because that's half of the diameter. And so the radius would be the top minus the bottom, x squared minus 0, or just x squared in our case, top minus bottom. What's the area of one cross section? Well, if this is the radius and my area formula is pi r squared, then my area for one cross section is going to be pi times my radius, x squared, squared, or pi x to the fourth. What does that make the volume? All right, well, we know volumes. Volumes come from integrating the area, so the volume is going to equal the integral of pi x to the fourth. Do I have bounds? Sure I do. My bounds are the x values, 0 and 2. There you go. That's the volume for it. So for any solid of revolution that is like this, that's a disk uh, when you get to it, um, that is going to be pi r squared, where r of x is the distance between the axis of revolution and the outside solid. It's your radius. OK, a couple examples. Number two. Take the region bounded by y equals e to the x, y equals 0, x equals 0, x equals 3. And you're like, what? Revolve this region about the x-axis, find the volumes of the solid formed. 
Okay, so let's first of all figure out what the heck this thing looks like. e to the x is an exponential function, right? So that's going to be something, if I were to look at it, that comes and goes, whoop, exponential function, y equals e to the x. You're just getting a general graph, by the way. You're not needing to be perfect specific. You just need to know what's on top and what region you're looking at and such, where your bounds are. Um, y equals 0 is the x-axis, x equals 0 is the y-axis, and x equals 3 is some number like this. Okay, so what's the region I'm talking about? It's bounded by the y-axis, the x-axis, 3, and the curve. That's the region. If I take and I uh, revolve this around the x-axis, it's going to mirror image this way. Again, when I revolve it, it turns into a circle. It, ch it turns into these disks. And my representative rectangle has to be perpendicular to what axis I'm revolving around, so it's going to go this way. Top minus bottom. So let's talk about the area that's generated by that. The area we know is pi r squared, pi. What's the radius? Well, the radius is the top minus the bottom. It's my function. Um, notice that this is a full circle, not like the last section when we were doing semicircles and had to use that half. This is a whole circle that I get from the disk that's created. So it is the top is e to the x, the bottom is 0, and that's being squared. All right, so here's what I got. I got pi e to the e to the x squared is e to the 2x. That's my area. And so now I'm ready to integrate to find the volume. My volume is going to be the integral going x values are 0 to 3 of my area pi e to the 2x dx. This one, for whatever reason, in the video, he went and uh, did the antiderivative of this. Um, it doesn't really say find the volume. I guess we can antiderivative this one. I'm going to pull the pi out though. Uh, it's going to give me pi times the integral 0 to 3 of e to the 2x dx. And so if I integrate that e to the 2x dx, I've got the pi out in front. If I integrate that, it's e to the 2x, but divided by 2, going between 0 and 3. Here I go. Pi's out there. This is going to be e to the 6th over 2 minus e to the 2 times 0 is 0 over 2. This one's not that bad if I keep going. I'm going to leave it with, with e's and such, but pi e to the 6th over 2. What's e to the 0? And you say 1 over 2. And there, really there's my answer. A couple different ways I could write it, but that's it, right there. All right, next one. This is the last note question, and then we've got a couple pr uh, practice problems and we'll be finished. Take the region bounded by 4 minus 2x, y equals 0, x equals 0, revolve the region around the y-axis, setting up the integral and finding the volume. So I need the picture. I'm, I'm all about this picture. This is 4 minus 2x. That's a straight line. The y-intercept is 4. The slope is negative 2, down 2, right 1, goes like this. It is bounded by the two axes, x equals 0, y equals 0. There it is. This time I'm revolving it around the y-axis. That means it comes over this way, a mirror images. Okay, this time my representative rectangle happens to be going the other way. Now I'm horizontal, a right and a left involved, and my equation has to be solved for x. y minus 4, y equals 4 minus 2x, y minus 4 equals negative 2x. Um, uh, I hate it when it's negative. Um, let, me, let me multiply everybody by a negative 1. Just switch all the signs. That makes this a uh, negative y and a positive 4 and a positive 2x so that when I divide this 
I get x equals negative y plus 4 all over 2. Geez, there's a few different ways I could write this, right? Um, we can leave it like that. That's fine. There's my x. So let's put our area together first. It is pi times r. r is right minus left. Right is the function, negative y plus 4 over 2. Uh, left is 0, so I don't really need that. Squared. There it is. Put your volume together. My now bounds have to be the vertical bounds, so this is 0 down here. We know that this top part was my y-intercept of 4. So 0 to 4 of my area, pi, negative y plus 4 over 2 quantity squared dy. By the way, this was an exact answer over here, this e to the 6th over 2, because that's really a number. So you, this represents a number. This is the exact value. You could use decimals and decimal it out if you wanted to, but you don't have to. This is, this is a constant, whatever it might be. This one, though, you need to literally toss in the calculator to find out what that would be. Oh, wait, I set up the integral to find, didn't ask me to solve it this time. Cool. All right, so I'm good to go. Uh, next one, we're going to pick a few. Practice problems, and then we be done. So I picked number three is my first one. I picked three of these, by the way. So one of three, here it is, number three. Uh, for each problem, sketch the area bounded by the equations, revolve it around the axis indicated, find the volume of the solid formed by this revolution, leave your answer in terms of pi. Okie doke. So first one I have, I need to know what the picture looks like. I have a straight line. I have a y-intercept of 2. I have a slope that is negative 1 half, down 1, right 2. Here it is. Here's my, here's my line. I want the region that's bounded by it and the x-axis and y-axis. x equals 0, y equals 0. So there it is. I am revolving this guy around the y-axis. That means it's coming over this way, mirror image. If it's around the y-axis, my representative rectangle is horizontal. My equation has to be solved for x. y equals negative 1 half x plus 2 becomes, let's multiply everybody by 2, 2y two equals negative x plus 4. That takes care of my fraction. Um, I want the x to be positive, so I'm going to swing him to the left and the 2y to the right. That's going to give me x equals... Uh, 4 minus 2y. So what's the area? The area is going to equal pi times my radius squared. The radius is 4 minus 2y and then it's that's the right hand side. The left hand side hits 0 so I technically it's minus 0 but I don't need that. So there's my area. What's my volume going to be? The integral of that pi times 4 minus 2y squared dy. What are the bounds? They're y values. Um, this guy is 0 at the bottom, and the y-intercept of my line was 2, so 0 to 2. And I go to my handy-dandy calculator, and I, oh, no, I don't. They want this thing in terms of pi, so I don't think the calculator is going to do that for you. I think you have to do this guy by hand. All right, pi comes out, 0 to 2 of 4 minus 2y quantity squared. I'm going to square it out so I can integrate each individual piece. Uh, 4 squared is 16. My middle term is negative 2y times 4 is negative 8. So I've got two of those, negative 16y. I'm foiling, guys. I'm just foiling this out. Plus 4y squared dy. Because I want to integrate. Here I go. This will be a 16y minus 16y squared over 2 makes this 8y squared. Uh, 4y, this is y cubed over 3, so that one's not going to simplify much. 4 thirds y cubed going between 0 and 2. Okie doke. Let's do this up. I have a pi if I put a 2 in, that gives me 32, 2 times 16. Uh, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 
negative 8 is negative 32. Oh, they knock each other out. Plus 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. Ooh, 32 over 3. Minus 0, 0, 0, 0. So the 32's are gone. The 0 I can ignore, and I get a final answer of pi times 32 thirds. So 32 pi over 3. And we have left our answer in terms of pi. All right, that's number three. Number five is a little shorter, believe it or not. Number five, you've got an e to the x, x equals zero, y equals e, revolve around the y-axis, but don't set up a don't evaluate. And we're like, woohoo, I don't have to go through all that. So let's look at the picture again. e to the x, exponential graph, here it is x equals 0 is the y-axis, um, y equals e, y equals e is going to be a horizontal line at 2.718 where e is, y equals e. This guy is y equals e to the x and the y-axis. Alright, so what's the region I'm talking about? I'm talking about this one right in here. I am revolving around the y-axis. I'm horizontal, right minus left. I need to know my bounds, which is kind of interesting. So I know that this guy here has a y value of e, right? I know what that guy is. I know him. I don't know what this guy is down here, but I know for sure that's where um, this thing where you've got a zero, if you have x equals 0. So to get that coordinate, y equals e to the 0 power. x is 0 here. That's going to be a y equals 1. So the coordinate for this place is 0, 1. Oh, by the way, when I revolve it, I shouldn't have put my point there, it comes over here. Right, it would be on that other side. Let's see if we can figure out our area. Oh, we also need to change our equation, don't we? Um, let's change the equation first, and then we'll put the area together. It can't be y equals e to the x. It has to be solved for x. How do you get the x down when it's a power? Ooh, hopefully you remember. You take the ln of both sides, so this is going to be the ln of y equals x times the ln of e. Remember balance, you got to keep that balance. What you do to the left, do the right. I'm ln on both sides. That ln of e actually equals 1. So really your equation is x equals the ln of y. All right, cool. Now we're ready to roll. Area is pi. All right. Right minus left. Right is e to the x. Oh, not e to the x. ln of y. ln of y. Minus the left is 0 squared. Right, pi r squared. So in our case that's going to be pi times the ln of y squared. I put that into my volume formula, which is just the integral. Integral are the y values, 1 to e. Uh, one to e. Right, so we've got 1 on the bottom, e on the top. They are the y values, and I have pi times the ln of y quantity squared dy. I set it up and I did not have to solve it. That's my answer. Alright, here comes the last one. It's a trig one. I picked a trig one. Number 9. Revolve around, uh, by the way, they yeah, same thing. Find the region and then revolve it around the x-axis. Again, set up but don't evaluate. And we're like, yes, I don't have to do the extra step. This one's around the x-axis, so I don't have to change the function. I can leave it just the way it is. I do need a picture, though. I want to see what this thing looks like. I'm going between 0 and pi, and I'm doing the square root of, of the sine of x. Now, you can put this in your calculator to see what the graph actually looks like. It kind of goes like this. It looks like the regular old sine graph going between 0 and pi. So this point here is 0, 0. All right, all the dogs in the neighborhood are having a party. Um, this is pi zero. 
and you can see that if you graph it and see the picture but nonetheless that's what it looks like i wouldn't know off the top of my head necessarily what that looks like i'd have to think about that a little bit so using a calc to graph it is fine here's the region there it be I'm revolving around the x-axis, so I have a vertical representative rectangle this time. I think I'm pretty good to go because I'm doing the area, and the area equals pi r squared. Pi f of b or f of x minus g of x, the top of my rectangle hits the function, the square root of x, square root of sine of x. Um, the bottom of the function hits zero squared. Well, that's just going to be pi times the square root of the sine of x squared. When you square a square root, it gets rid of it. I'm still going right. Pi times the sine of x. That's my area. And you're like, that is sweet. So here I go. My integral is going x value 0 to pi of pi sine of x. So that one that looked kind of crazy hard was really very easy. All right, that's the end. So shoot me an email if you've got any questions. I'll see you in class. And uh, we are almost done. We have 10, 11, and 12. So I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, keep up the hard work, and I'll see you in class. Bye.